We're gonna have a lot of meat. Ah, oh, it's so pretty. There we go. Oh, it's so beautiful. Welcome back to M's Adventures in Storytelling. This time I sit down for a Korean lunch of all-you-can-eat Korean barbecue with my buddy Noel, whom I hadn't seen in a long time, and we catch up on this and that. For those of you who are sensitive to talk about nudity, maybe you don't want to listen to this. For the rest of you, I promise we talk about other things other than nudity. Enjoy. Good, thank you. No, this is, well, it's my first time. Have you been here? No, okay. First time for everything. Yeah. Amen. So, are you guys able to look at the menu? Any questions you may need? Any clarifications? I mean, we've, we've done this before, just not here, right? So, so we're good. That's why, like, I want to know where you guys are. Yeah, yeah, we're comfortable. Oh, we've we're good. Korean so, before. So, yeah, yeah. We wouldn't go with me, the all A. Those. All you can eat A. And so, some, do you want what spicy pork with? belly or soy yes. pork belly or? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, I want them all. No. Okay, so. Spicy so, pork belly? Oh, just before we start, yeah, three meats per round. Okay, three okay. per round. We can do that. All right, fire pan, three meats per round. What's okay, so... There? Oh, it's the gas. I'm <laughs> like, what's down there? And we have thin sliced pork fire pan. belly, too. Okay, so we certainly need some sort of pork belly and some sort of bulgogi. Oh. Yeah. And then, so so let's start with that. What do you recommend? I mean, we like um, some meat, so spicy For the third good, meat on the first round. Yeah. So I would suggest... So some type of pork belly and yeah. some type of bulgogi. Yes. So we'll just start with the regular bulgogi. Okay, good. And if you want, you can try with the unmarinated pork belly first, and then maybe transition back into the spicy pork belly for some next, next rounds. Uh, okay. Do you, do you guys like marinated stuff or not? Yeah, I mean, but what what are you in the mood for? Yeah. I mean, food is good, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love pork belly. Yeah. <laughs> I like pork belly. <laughs> so we might <laughs> so we might need to do a marinated and an unmarinated yeah. pork belly. Does we'll, that make sense? We can do like I like it. Thin yeah. cut and then spicy pork belly. That sounds amazing. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. I like and a thin cut. You like thin cut? A little bit of thin cut and then spicy pork belly. Yeah. yeah. Spicy is thick cuts. Yeah. Okay, okay good. Good. It's a little variety. Yeah. Excellent. And rice for you guys, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I got a wire on me. Red fire pan out in this is technically Falls Church. It's in Eden Center, which Eden is a Center. Vietnamese food center, and we have four kinds yeah, what of are, kimchi. What are our banchan so, that we've got so yeah. far? So we got um, a thin radish kimchi. Delicious. Classic Napa kimchi. Yes. And then we have radish that's been colored pink. Also, Pickled in something else, so yeah. not peppers, oh, but and like I love a vinegar that one maybe. Over there. That one is, is like. Is that the pear thing, or is that like some? It's like pear or apple or something, yeah. And then a lightly dressed salad, because sometimes you need a little bit of salad. You need some roughage in yeah. your life. And then here we have three sauces. Looks like, like one is a spicy sauce. Oh, we should get some sort of jjigae or something. What do you want? Oh, should we also get a soup? Uh, a chigae? Do you want? Do you want? Do you want? Yeah, I, yeah, it's a good day for soup. Yeah. We have a sodium taste too, and a spicy tofu too. So it's like either if you spicy want tofu? spicy tofu. Yeah, let's do some spicy, spicy tofu. tofu. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. No, just one. Just one, I think just one yeah, because we're gonna share. That's yeah. yeah. We need some Do we need liquid. any mandu or I mean anything? We're gonna have a lot of meat. I no, mean, I think I'm good. Okay. And the rice is coming in a traditional little. Do the Koreans eat rice? I had no idea. Yeah, actually, they use, rice was a fancy thing. They used to not be able to eat rice. How do you? They say, how be... are you doing in Korean today? I don't speak Korean. No, it's have you eaten rice today or oh, yeah, whatever? Oh, that's right. Yeah. When they greet each other, they say. Have you eaten rice today? Oh, and I saw over there at that table they had the beef rib. So. Oh, we might need some beef rib too. Beef. And of course, just like gnaw on that. Here we have some tongs and some scissors. Why would I need scissors for my meal? I don't understand. Yeah, I know it's so weird. People are freaked out by the scissors. Oh, here comes the meat. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, look at room. those. They look so pretty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think this warrants mm. a little video. Oh, look at oh, the yeah. flames. We're, we're, it's a good day. Oh, flaming pork belly. They came up from Richmond for this, so yeah. Richmond? Yeah. I mean, there's Korean food there, but it's not like here, so yeah. There's no fire pan down there. I've never been to Richmond, but how is it down there? It's smaller than this, you know, so I mean, there, there's, it's got a good food scene, but it's, but I mean, DC's worth that, you know, so. Yeah. DC has a lot of good food on there. Mmm. 
What are the three sauces? So, this is going to be soybean paste. Too. No, okay. not soybean paste. And it's going to be sweet chili and soy sauce. Okay, great. Thank you. Do you need a little, this is delightful by the way. I thought this was yeah, gonna I be Yeah, I love that. I love that kind. I thought this was gonna be more funky, like more fermented, no, but it's not at all. It's, it's quite it's, crunchy. Yeah, yeah. It's it's tart. marinated, but it's not yeah. fermented. Crunchy and tart, that's what I like. Like a crunchy tart. I'm Who you call a crunchy tart? I know. That better say in your thing, by the way. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm, yummy. Oh, short arms. This is very bad. There's a whole would it be, we should have switched seats, because then we're, you know, because then we're both leaning over right now to... Oh, we can switch seats. You want to? You want Sure, we can. That's too sensible. <laughs> well, let's do it. Oh, I lost my napkin. Is that you? Darn it. I'm going to give you a plate with your cooties. Okay. Did you, oh, here's your rice. Mm. With your cooties? You I didn't look away when you... Cooties? Um, handing me my rice, I'm very yeah. offended. Mm-hmm. Did you dip in your sauce? I did not dip in my sauce yet. Have you already dipped in your sauce? I have not. Okay. That's right. I cook my. I was gonna say, one. there are tongs over there. You can do them too. Um, I'm busy eating salad. Thank you. Mm. Salad. I'm terrible at this. <laughs> Yeah, I'm terrible at cooking. What is this kind? That's a marinated uh, radish. Oh, it's also it radish? It is a radish, okay. Pickled radish. Yeah. But this is also radish. Also radish. And that's also, also radish. radish. Yeah. You know. Mm. But this one tastes different. It's a pickled one. It's like jalapeno. It has a little kick. Mm-hmm. Not it's lovely. Bad. It's lovely. Oh, yeah. Woo! Yes. That's a flame. Do what you, yeah, yeah, I would say keep. No, you, it's nice. You can manage to like not have any hair on your arms. Ooh, yeah, that jalapeno was. <clears throat> That'll wake you up. Yeah, this is both sour and spicy. That's really nice. I enjoyed it. Yeah, like a little crispy. Or... Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to start on it. Now, I like it whatever. always. Yeah, really. <laughs> I like it crispy, floppy, fatty. That's the right way. You know, yeah. all of it. Uh, chop it up to make it a little bit easier. Thanks. Mm. Oh, that's delightful, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yes. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, that's exactly the way to start this right now. Yeah. Mmm. 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 Oh, yeah. Got to pick the little ones. <laughs> Don't get, leave any get behind. You some Don't leave anyone behind. Like the Marines. <laughs> mm. Excellent. Ooh. Oh. oh my goodness. Ooh. Now you're talking fancy. What? That was super fancy. I gotta get video of that. Okay, do it again. Just a note from post-production land. Our server used a pink piece of pickled radish as a little sponge to clean off the grill between meats. <laughs> do it again. I have never seen anyone do that. I love it. That's how it mm -hmm. cleans the oil off? Mmm. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do the bulgogi just to mix it. Yeah. Got it. And his little... <laughs> mm. And then he said that one has to be eaten, too. I uh, love it. So what food have you discovered since coming back? Like, what's here? I haven't really discovered that much. I've been eating a lot of Vietnamese food. Okay, I mean, that's delightful. A lot. Any new Vietnamese places or stuff that you've known forever? I really like the uh, Ban Mi. Yeah. At Cafe Ban Mi in Alexandria. Okay. Their Ban Mi is really good. My little go-to uh, place, like, by me, do a Ban Mi. Mm -hmm. And so if I remember, I'll pick one up for like the next day's lunch. I like getting one and eating it for breakfast. Oh, that'd be a good breakfast lunch. sandwich. So I've been to that one a lot. Uh, I like their lotus fruit. Mm -hmm. It's like a lightly pickled lotus fruit mm -hmm. with greens and then shrimp. So it's kind of a sour salad, wet salad. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. And then their fun's pretty good too, but I love their banh mi. That was my primary reason 
to move to Richmond. So I was hanging out, like doing grad school in Richmond. Yeah. Um, and we'd go out and have a beer or go out for dinner or whatever after class. Mm -hmm. And so I discovered their, so they, their Eden Center, their equivalent, you know. And so mm. I was like, yes, I need all of this in my life. And when I come down and visit. Absolutely. I have to go there. And then we'll take you to all the breweries that I know you love. Yeah. I went to mini Minnesota for a pizza. But you've had good pizza, so why did you want to try their pizza? Uh, for an adventure? Okay. I'm yeah. Gonna... So this James Beard Award winning Korean American chef. Okay, so you didn't start with that. You said, I went to Minnesota for yeah. pizza. And I was like, no, no, for James Beard Award winning Korean. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's... Her name's Ann Kim. Excellent. She, I think she did, she was also, her pizzeria, Pizzeria mm. Lola. Was featured I like all three on. Of those. Oh yeah, was featured on uh, Diners, Drivers, and Dives. She has a bulgogi pizza. I went for that, but that was actually not very good. The other two pizzas I got, because I got three pizzas. The other two were really good. She and her husband, she's apparently one of the leading restaurateurs in the state. She wow. has maybe six or seven well, restaurants. So she's types. a player. I like it. She and her husband had one that was named after I think their moms. I love it. I think it was called Suki and Mimi or something like that. Awesome. And they decided to close that down and then open up sort of a high-end Korean restaurant. So that's what they did and it happened to be that. <laughs> I haven't had fancy Korean food and I would love to try it just to, because it looks well, very beautiful, right? I mean, it's all about the presentation. I mean, so. the food was not high-end in that sense. It wasn't like palace. It wasn't the royal stuff. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't palace food. It was your standard stuff, so I oh, don't but just elevated, okay. Yeah. Well, so lovely. I mean, that's... Just in a very nice modern restaurant with fancy cocktails. So the, this um, Kim's is what the new restaurant's called. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take reservation. And it was about 40 degrees, 38. So a nice balmy fall in Minnesota. Yeah. And I didn't have a jacket with me. So I stood in line from a quarter to five until five when they opened. One thing I really love about being back in America, okay. restaurants are open all day. Yeah, yeah. I can get dinner at 4.30, still be in bed by 7. Yeah, like if I went to Spain, I would just do like happy hour and then call that dinner, you know, because yeah. I'm not staying out like starting at 9, you know. Yeah, mm. yeah it's disintegrating. We might need another one of these just to... Um, yeah, to have it on top. We need a scraper. We need a scraper. Spatula. We did a terrible job. <laughs> yeah, we, we were busy talking you about all the other. You did a terrible job. <laughs> no, oh, that's it. Right. Actually, <laughs> um, he's our friend today, so we're gonna. Yeah. You know, <laughs> what do you guys do? By the way. So we. Oh, I'm taking pictures and I'm recording a podcast right now. Oh. Yeah. It's a podcast. Podcast. About food and. Travel. Yeah. Yeah. I actually haven't listened to it, so I need to, I can't yeah. really speak about the podcast, but I know her, so I know what, I'd be like, all right, we're, we're yeah. just babble on about whatever, so. Yeah. yeah all right. right, looks good. Especially that one. Uh, you cleaned that up well, thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're good, I think. I'm, I'm from Mongolia. You're from Mongolia, okay. In Mongolia, yeah. and then, and then you here, moved here six years ago. Did you come here for grad school? No, no, no. I came here because my, my mom got a green, so I moved down here six years ago. Just finished college, actually. Oh, okay. Okay. Undergrad this May. Nice. I'm from California. Oh, you're a little okay. baby. Wait, now you're saying California? Come on, pick one, dude. You know, so <laughs> I, just, um, I moved here to California originally. Okay. I was there for six years. Okay. Oh. Where, were was, you, where were you? What was your school? Where were you? Yeah. Berkeley, okay, Cal. Yep, like decal. Okay, got it. You went to Berkeley. Um, like Sacramento area, yeah, right? Near, near yeah, we're gonna need another one, cause now it's done. It's done. I think. Yeah. We, we. Well, the rest of the story goes. Uh, my mom moved, moved here from Mongolia this July. Oh. So I had to move down. So she's Canada. here now. So she is here. Now. That's awesome. So I came came here, help her settle up. It's been six fives. Nice. You had to oh, help good. her set it up? Set what up? Huh? So like, just like help mom set oh, it up. Oh, get yeah, up her get, get it, yeah. house in order? Yeah. She doesn't speak English, so having, having, having a son that speaks always helps near her. It helps, yeah. Been it's here five, six months now. I'm looking for a job, so hopefully oh. move back to California. You want to go back West Coast? Yep. Awesome, thank you. What was your your degree? What was your major? I did economics and sociology. Nice, that's awesome. Yeah, so I want to get into consulting. Wait, so you want to move back there? 
fantastic. But your mom lives here. I know. You well, can move your mom there. That's why well, he wants I mean, to go back there. Yeah. Well, in my defense, I was very, very, very honest about my opinion coming down here. I told her. I, I was, I was very open to her. Why does she move me. here? Why can't she move out there? We got to convince her to move out there. I couldn't. Sunny California. Why did, why did she move here? She just doesn't like it. There. She wants. Uh, Has she been there? She's been there. She's, she's, she's mostly been to LA, but she just changed. Well, nobody likes Sacramento. Come on. Uh, nobody mm, likes Sacramento. Mm, and I think she. Why don't you move to like San Jose? Of, I think I think San Jose would be lovely. I think she has a lot of like people that she knows here. Ah, I mean, does she have a job here? Huh? Does she have a job here? Well, I'm figuring that out. My mom's in a camp, so now, now I'm letting her like learn the language a little bit more, and then letting her take the CPA. Oh yeah. So she can continue doing. Yeah. Mm. You should so get her want, friends to move out. So I wanted to move to New York. You know? I wanted to see what the fuss was about. Oh yeah. Because people always say like, yeah, New York will be my vibe. Because I like something a little chaotic. You know, I've always, I was always oh, yeah. grew up in a big city. You know, I do not know the suburban lifestyle. And so you know, <laughs> New York. I, You're living it right now. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I, wanted, I wanted to go, go down there, but my girlfriend she still, still lives in LA. Right. She's, she's in the film. You know? So she should be in LA. LA. Yeah. So she has to live in LA. So I'm just, I'm like, I mean, you got a dad, problem. My dad also lives in or New York. California, so oh yeah, fair enough. I would say like LA or LA. New York. Yeah. So that was the choice. So I'm the girls like, in LA. Just like go to the LA. You gotta there. move to LA, and once you have grandchildren, your mom will move. There you go. That's the reality. Yeah. Once you have grand, don't have them right away. You're young. I but, yeah. I you know. I they scream and they poop a lot. Don't do oh, it. Do you already have some? Yeah. Kids. Okay. I'm just saying, don't have them right now, yeah. you know. If I have one. Maybe like okay. Right, my, my, well, you should have one because if your mom will move. There you go. Or you can send the kid yeah, to let's her. See, let's see. Let's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have her I can barely take care of myself, so yeah, you kids are not I, what I need in my life. My so you should get a job in L.A. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm looking into right now. Okay, I'm consulting. Then you can live wherever you want. Yeah. And then yeah. maybe after, after L.A., maybe I can, you know somewhere else you know i'm surprised your your cal connections aren't helping out with doing job stuff because i mean i know berkeley has all sorts of yeah. relations in yeah, it's various not just not helping out. it's just like the last couple of months i just did not have the chance to even start job hunting stuff until like maybe like a couple of weeks ago maybe like oh. a month ago i started Okay, so things are now settled because, you know, to a point. Because you know, like it's like you know, I'm taking care of my brother and my and my mom at the same time. So like, but your brother doesn't speak here, English. You know, server server job is really hard to you know provide for three people. So, you know, and I, and I, like I the hours people. are crazy and yeah. yeah. It's like like last month I worked for like over 50, 60 hours a yeah. day just just trying to. Was you know, your brother in school? Yeah, he's third. He just turned thirteen. So oh. He's a he's still you know. And where's your dad? Uh, well, he's medical reasons, so he's back home. So he's not providing any support? Uh, and not anytime soon, so... Oh. Maybe until, I don't know, next year? Mm -hmm. Even until then, he has to come back here, figure his stuff out here first in order to... Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, to be able to... I feel like, I feel like I'm the one that might be start providing earlier than him. Your mom needs to learn some English. She is learning, but... So are there regions in the U.S. that have a significant Mongolian population? Arlington she could County. move. Arlington. Oh. So, okay, well then that's a good answer. Yeah. yeah. That's why she There's likes a it. a lot of Mongolians down here. I know. I was surprised. Because in L.A., we have a lot of Mongolians there, but L.A. is so big that yeah. everyone's scattered yeah. around. Here, for some reason, everyone's in Arlington County. A lot of there's a lot of different groups in Arlington or, or thereabouts, right? I mean, so there's like this included, here. right? I mean, so yeah. Just like one space, so you see them more often. Yeah, so that's my. Well, so story. maybe here's a little wild, you know? I mean, who knows? Yep. LA will always be there. That's all good. You're being a good son. Yeah, absolutely. That's. Yeah. that's... I wasn't. I wasn't able to drop on while I was in school because a lot of family stuff happened during that time. At least you finished up, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Having that piece of paper, especially yep. from a well-known school, is going to help. I mean, that's... Yeah. Big thing off of my chest. Yeah. I would start with them. Like, I would start with their career office. Like, mm -hmm. like go talk to them. Yeah. You should network. Yeah, that's what, I'm, that's what I started doing. I even, I even reduced my hours here just so I could, like, spend more time doing that. I only work during weekends now. Yeah, because... Because my plan was to, you know, 
finish school, go back with my dad, and just like fully, you know, use that opportunity to like hundred percent focus on job hunting. Was and not, then he got sick. Well, yeah, but he, he he got sick. So like in in March, I have to take a month off of school just so I can move back to LA to take care of things. Got that bad. Right. That that part was that part was a little hard keeping up the school while you're not there. Still mm. made it happen though. Yeah. Yeah, I can't stop me, you know. I love it. Good for you. We've all got our path, you know, and so trust that you're on that path, you know, yeah. whatever that path looks yeah. like. I'm actually glad I'm doing this, you know. Learn, surprisingly learn a lot while working here. Well, and, yeah? and you'll meet all sorts About of different what? people at a place like this, you know, that's... What do you learn? Huh? What do you learn? Uh, people skill. I mean, I mean, I was always good with people, people skill. I got a couple of girls while I was working here. Yeah. Surprisingly, out of all things. I believe it. Yeah. Because you have no idea who randomly just shows up, right? I mean, that's... Yeah. Yeah, and there are lots of consulting firms here. Yeah. All sorts of consulting firms. here, to be honest. I'm a type of person that's like... I, I love talking to people. love meeting new people. It's a mm. great place for someone like me, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, and, and with any big city, you're going to find educated people who want to talk about themselves you know what i mean so um and so if you're if you're if you've got those good listening skills they'll happily you know i don't know if they're eating korean barbecue though maybe the the, the important people the people who might yeah. hire you but um, someone who comes and gets korean barbecue would be interested in talking to a mongolian guy who's you know wanting to get back out to california and they have something you know that's that's the that's the part that always gets people when i say i'm mongolian Really? I'm like, yeah. oh no, I got a, a buddy from my California days uh -huh. who did Peace Corps Mongolia and brought back a Mongolian wife with him, you know, so I think with her here consent. Now. Oh yeah, no, she was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It wasn't she, like, he's she like, was happy what to, souvenirs shall I bring back from Mongolia? <laughs> a random person. And we had one in grad school with us. What was that? He was brought over, this a long time ago, but he was actually brought over because the Mongolian government paid for him to come to grad school. It's like 20 years ago. But the idea, he said that only 10% of Mongolians that they send over come back. But it was worth it for the government to bring to someone that, yeah, over here. Yeah. To get that's, like a, that's, like, that's like a thing, you know, once you come out here, people, they just don't. Yeah. People who are and not just that. educated, but worldly, right? Worldly and educated. The so outside, yeah. I think we're going to, what, we wanted another portion of bulgogi? Sounds good. Right? Both of these pork bellies were good. Have we deserved another type of... We, uh, there's also the thin sliced beef brisket. I don't know if we need a bulgogi and a beef brisket. Okay. There's also spicy bulgogi. That's just bulgogi with spice. With some spice. And then there's soy pork belly. Straight. Do we want to try soy. a soy pork belly? Sure. All right. So and have you had some of this? I haven't. Not yet. You should have some. Um. So. Nice big piece of tofu. Right. Okay. So a soy pork Ooh. belly. Some sort of steak thing. You were talking about the ribs at one point. Oh, I think that's in the fancier package. Oh, that's in the fancier one. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's all right. French fries. Who's getting French fries? <laughs> For the four-year-old. Oh, they also have chicken. Yeah. What do you recommend? So, what have you gotten um, here that's yummy? Mongolians are meat eaters. Yeah. Right? I like our beef, so... Steak? Brisket and fire pan steaks what I would suggest. Okay. And then do we want to do the soy and pork belly? And the soy pork belly. Also. Yeah. Those three, right? Oh, I haven't had this in a long time. I miss these. Except mm. there's a bunch of zucchini and a lot of veggies. No, I need the little meaty bits, right? Mm. Mm. This pork belly is really nice. See, you got an interview that you weren't even expecting. I know. Now, will these pick up from him? Like, was he close enough to be able to pick up that? Probably. I would these are amazing. So. These actually were on sale for 20 bucks. The first that I bought were 36. I was, you know, I have like the noise canceling headphones for mm -hmm. meetings. And I'm always amazed at what it picks up and what it doesn't pick up like it doesn't pick up dog barks for example mm. because teams does a, a surround canceling whatever thing oh. um but like i've had people have their like kids come into the room and like try to talk to them and like we'll hear like that little chatter you know so it's i don't think these are sound canceling well but i kind of want some of this ambient noise right That's it will pick this up I really do like the the ambient noise of the restaurant at least the one we went to last time Mm. Yeah, sizzle. That's what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, sizzle. Little video sizzle. Something about thin slices sizzling. 
Uh, this is some good video. I also did a test. I, I downloaded this because I kept getting ads, of course, for it on my different social media. So clearly you need it. Yes, obviously I needed it. Um, but with a company called Riverside where you can record and it provides an online studio with separate tracks. So I, I tried that with Mariana. I would love to have y'all just babble on about God knows what. Yeah, and I, so we did do a little one, which I've cut down, removing references to real people, sure, yeah, yeah, sure enough. et cetera. So it's basically her, and we and I filmed it as well. So I have that. It's about 30 minutes, and I played, I sent the file to her and played it for her with the visuals, where it's cute for her and myself, because most people probably aren't going to find our faces cute to look at. But for us, it was fun. And then I just sent her the audio file so she could hear what it's like when you don't have the visuals, um, right? Because it's a different experience when you're not looking at somebody's chin or whatever. These are such delicate pieces of meat. We don't need to dry yeah, them out. Arm. Dry them out. So yeah, I'm testing out different methods, but the finding a quiet enough restaurant. So have you heard of StoryCorps? I'm not familiar Story with StoryCorps is this organization uh, that is, I just found it yesterday. They have, they started, I don't know where, somewhere in mean, New York maybe. And, we'll go with New York. Yeah. And the idea is that they help you and maybe children with their grandparents, whoever, just tell the stories of their life, whatever they want to talk about. So you can look up by subject too. I could do their thing, but instead I'm just doing my own thing. But my idea, my idea was Everyone has a story, right? Everybody's got a story. And some people may be as boring as a door knob mm. in real life. I got it. Thank you. But they probably have at least one story that's kind of interesting. And so that was my thought. Is and so try to get that one story? Get that one story or get a story. Thank you. What's your name? Tingus. Tingus? Oh, like, of course, the man himself. Now we're ready for the next. Fire pan, yeah, that's I, I love steak. So is Mongolian food a lot like Korean food? Huh? Is Mongolian food like Korean food? Oh, we're opposite. We're opposite? There's nothing similar about it. What? A lot, a lot of, of yogurt meat. drinks, right? A lot of meat a lot yeah. of a lot of meat and dairy. Mongolian food is not really that type of in complete with you. Okay. Because you know. Very, very harsh environment. Yeah, you gotta, well, and, and you gotta few get people some protein in a large and fat man. To Yeah, right? Just to survive, the right? The cold. Let's try this. Mm. Pretty, pretty dry. I mean, because they're so thin. Dip it and then dip it. So, yeah, I had this really wild massage with this woman who is a massage therapist, but she had such crazy stories she told me during the massage. Like, yeah, and this, when this, my fifth husband broke my yeah. other eye and I'm like I'm sorry what you know she told like, me was it stuff that had happened to her or was yeah. it like oh when I oh, was yeah. robbing the spank this one time no no no, the... no her okay. so I was like my god I should have you on my podcast Please well I love that premise that it's no matter where you go you can find someone with an mm -hmm. interesting story that's so fun and some people may have more than one but just tell me one good story yeah tell me a story yeah. and if you're good we'll bring you back so with Jason nude art model We've moved on into clothes and massage. So the, the does bit he about, care about clothes or massage? He does. Okay. Yeah, I was like, oh, because I really thought that maybe he only had one story to tell. Okay. You know. Okay. Um, but no. No. Um, if, if I remember him correctly, he seemed multifaceted, so that's good. And he has a nice, deep voice, or not super deep, but he has a nice voice, and you know. Okay. Do you guys use scissors in your cooking too? Uh -huh. Do you use scissors in your cooking too? In your bowling cooking? No. It's the best. Scissors are the best. It's the only time I use scissors is I use cream barbecue. Oh, really? I mean, if you're going to use scissors, that's the time to do it. This is, yeah, that's the time to do it. That one has more of a liver taste. It's more about the texture. I'm kind of enjoying this dry. At home, I almost never cook meat. So I have a backyard with a grill and like a deck and mm. things. And so, so I haven't done it recently, but I enjoyed, you know, getting on the grill because that's what boys do. Yeah, at home I usually just eat ham. I would go with that. I go to Wegmans and I'm like, I would like four pounds of ham, <laughs> thinly cut. I'll be back in 25 minutes. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> they get a workout. I was up in Pittsburgh one weekend, and we were at some, like, Italian market. And so they had all sorts of salamis and sofrasadas and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
And I was like, hi, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'd like some soap Sada, please. And they're like, sure. And then they named off four different types of soap Sada. I assume like brands. And I was like, I don't know what any of that is. Yeah. It's like, I want one with some pepper in it. And he's like, they all have pepper in it. Okay, well, what do you like? You know, and he just yeah. Like, and he gave me a lovely little tin of, you know, plastic container of delicious sliced soap Sada, and it was mm. delightful. We should do a little weekend trip up mm. to Pittsburgh because they have some interesting food. Yeah situations going on yeah. there. It's people more, are really hard on Pittsburgh. I didn't know, I and mean, I still don't know much, but I thought it was going to be a whole bunch of white people food, and it generally is, but it's like Eastern European, like old country white people food, right? I know, it might be a The other advantage of going out to eat is you don't have to clean up. Glory marinated. Right. Pork belly. Hot, hot, hot. Girl, mm -hmm. you have air conditioning here. Mm -hmm. That was the thing. People were like, yeah, but you're moving to D.C. That's just as hot as Rome, right? But the difference is, in D.C., there is highly over-functioning A.C. Yeah. Whereas in Rome, eh. Sometimes. Well, sometimes functioning. Mm -hmm. Certainly not highly. I didn't get to try your oh, you didn't actual get kimchi. Mm. So we'll talk to our friend here. Yeah, we need some more of this. When you have a moment... Could we get... Yeah, can we get more one of the, the standard... Kimchi the Napa and kimchi the, and this the, one? Yeah. Thanks. You like the, you like the paper one? Yeah, we both I do. Yeah. And I ate all that. He didn't get I, any. Yeah, I didn't get any of that. So she, <laughs> yeah, right. And I can just like that one. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's half the fun, right? What I didn't realize was how many shootings there are in this area. When we went out to eat Indian food and there was a holdup outside while we were in the restaurant. Why were we being held up? The people who were sitting outside. Like, of your restaurant? They were sitting outside of the restaurant. And it's over there on the border of Northeast and Southeast. Okay. And these two guys in a, in a Kia, two dudes in a Kia pull up. They're, they put on their ski masks <laughs> and get their guns. And they hold up this table outside. While they're sitting at the restaurant. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. So those of us who are inside, we hear, get down, get down, active shooter. The cops came, kind of normal. There's nothing about you that's normal, but that's I fine. Know. But we acted very calmly. And we were like getting back to eating, drinking. And I said to her, I said, she's like, you guys are acting so like, like, and I said, because we don't, this is not traumatizing us. This was bringing up trauma for her. She's like, I saw people get shot in front of me growing up here. And I said, and we didn't. So no. it's not bringing that trauma for us. Really good cocktails. <laughs> really good cocktails. Really good cocktails. But I told the, because then I was talking to the one of the owners. I said, your food and your drink is really delicious, but I'm never coming here again. <laughs> He's like, okay, I get you. Because I can get delivery. <laughs> yeah. I don't need There's to come a here. There's called DoorDash. Yeah, I don't have to come here and risk getting shot. That's the thing, since COVID, you can get cocktails delivered, so that's yeah. fun. Because that I know how much of a, a booze hound you are. Oh my gosh, you know I am. And that cocktail was so mm. good. <laughs> the wait staff who sold us the drink, she was like, it goes down really fast. Mm. And we're like, what do you mean it goes down really fast? She's like, that's, a, that's, a, that's the only way I can really describe it. It goes down really fast. And she was right. It was so <laughs> freaking delicious. Yeah, you're like, oh, I'm going to need a big gulp of that. Mm -hmm. It was see-through. So it just didn't look like anything. It just looked like a glass of water. water. It yeah. looked like a glass of water. They did put a little piece of a banana leaf in it or something just to decorate the, little, little. the glass. It was just your regular glass, whiskey glass or whatever they're called. And, but then it was made with Indian rum, I think and other stuff obviously my gosh it was good wow oh i think i was just not meat sweat but meat first little meat like yeah, so you, your life and you're like what am i doing with yeah that? like what's going on here yeah. from having no, a I, lot of meat i literally just have one of those two so i yeah, just i'm like I'm Ooh, Ooh. i think we're good here yeah especially because yeah, i gotta get some bubble tea afterwards Ooh. and uh and maybe a band me to take home breakfast i know you just gave me a a, a fist bump mentally right no i'm bubble tea is absolutely yeah. I, it's like Ooh. a dessert stomach. Yeah, exactly. I absolutely will. Yeah. Ooh, that was like, I was like, it's a good thing I'm sitting down because I just felt a little dizzy. That's okay. We're going to 
We're gonna breathe for a second, have some water. Mm -hmm. No room for water. No rice. Mm -hmm. Woo. But I think we're good on the all you can eat. It's funny. You have softened in your old age. Yeah. Because right about now is when I start slowing down. And I back in the day, be you'd be like, and yeah, we're going to do another round of this, right? And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to die. What's your like breakfast situation most mornings? My favorite breakfast is the ham and cheese sandwich. That sounds lovely. Except I where you my find the, the ham. I get it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> by the pound. By your four pounds worth. And I love it because you can get it. In America, you can get ham shaved okay. or very thin with Are you familiar with like a country ham or a Smithfield ham? Yeah. I just get your regular old cooked yeah. ham. Well, so, so. Honey glazed cooked ham. Smithfield is a little town in southeast Virginia. I was up at an Italian market on Long Island and we were waiting for our sliced soap prosciutto or whatever. And this, this local, this New York woman comes in and it's like, yeah, I'd like to get a half a pound of Virginia ham. And so we're both just waiting around, just waiting for an order. And I'm like, hey, excuse me, what's Virginia ham? And she's like, you know, ham. And I was like, no, no, like, is it a country ham, like salted? She's like, no, it's like, and she's describing like a honey baked ham. Oh, okay. And so for her, a Virginia mm -hmm. ham is something that's got like a sweet glaze on it. Yeah. And I found that interesting because to me, a Virginia ham is like a Smithfield ham, like a country mm -hmm. ham, right? So. I remember for like parties, my parents would sometimes have one of the big hams. It was so nice because at a party you just slice off a little bit. We'll probably do that for Christmas. Mom grew up in a half Italian family and so did seven dishes. Oh, seven, dishes. seven fishes, yeah. And so she tried to make like a cipino, like a seafood stew. Yeah, then you cut them all. You're, what's that? You get them all. And then you get them all. And, yeah. and, and so that was, to me, that was very successful. But she doesn't like seafood that much. So I was like, so why'd you want to oh. do seven dishes? <laughs> Oh God, no! <laughs> Thank you. I think we're good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. I consider that a successful weekend if I didn't have to do anything. It rarely happens. Let's be very clear. But I'm sure you see people every weekend. There's typically well, I've I've picked up a lot of volunteering things, and so there's usually something going on. What volunteer work are you doing? Last year I became a master gardener. Oh well, yeah. And so I hang out with a bunch of seventy-year-old ladies who know a lot more about gardening than I do. Hmm. And so they're interesting. They're actually hilarious, you know. So. So do you have a plot of land aside from your own? Where so you I go have... and hang out with these other nerds? <laughs> <laughs> so so I have two raised beds in my backyard for me. Yeah. And then every county has an extension office, and so this is where not only master gardeners, but like 4-H. There's an ag agent for each county, so for, for actual commercial agriculture, there's some of And so, so in that office, a small little government office, we have a, we'll call it a demonstration garden, but we're trying to make it into a whole learning center, so I have like an outdoor classroom, and you know, so... So we go, like, next Thursday I'm gonna go <clears> help <throat> them install some sort of irrigation system. Like, I think the tank's actually getting put in, like, so rainwater capture. Oh, okay. So what does it take to be a master gardener? 50-ish hours of classroom training. So wow. Tuesday, Thursdays for like two and a half months. Mm -hmm. So six to nine kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then, then you have to have 50 hours on top of that of service. And so like, for example, one of the big things we do is a, a plant sale in the spring. And so help people load their plants up in their vehicle. So not 50 hours in your garden. So yeah, no, my garden doesn't count, but like the demonstration garden oh, at the, that, one. that okay. counts. Yeah. Hmm. And there's different categories. Like one of the things we do is a help desk. And so people can call in or email really? us and say, hey, I've got this random thing on my roses. What do I do about it? Hmm. Yeah, and we'll figure it out. Cool, thank you. Do we talk to you or do we go up to the front or what's the best? So I had to do X number of hours on the help desk, right? I had, um, Is that a nationwide line? No, that's specific to the county. Oh. Because each county has its own different past, its own different like, environment, like, right? So, oh. so it's localized. Are these things all over the country? Every state has. So in Virginia, we have two land grant universities that's Virginia Tech and Virginia State. Mm -hmm. Virginia State's in Petersburg. It's a historically black college, HBCU. And so they're the ones who do the research that feeds into this. So, mm, okay. So the woman in that extension office is technically an employee of Virginia Tech. And so the new one I just found is Master Naturalists. Oh. So Master Gardeners look at gardens. 
But a master naturalist is a nudist. <laughs> a naturalist is a nudist. So we aren't nude, but you, you, you can choose to be nude, I guess. I should ask them that in the first class. <laughs> so when do we get you naked? You just show <laughs> up <laughs> yeah, <right>. naked. <laughs> in like sunglasses or you know, whatever. Yeah. Just your motorboard. <laughs> right. Your little no, right. graduation hat. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm reaching the limit here. I know, right. Just do Ooh. what you got to do. Woo! I think we've eaten only about two pounds of food. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. But so they look at each, and mm -hmm. so it's a much broader kind of like, let's go count all the birds in the sky today. You know, like. That just sounds like an excuse to go pee in a wood. I mean, so it's with a whole bunch of hippie people. You're mm -hmm. absolutely right. And so yeah, like we take nature walks and like try to forage for mm -hmm. mushrooms. You know, like that. Can you find a guy who, or a gal, or an it? I don't care. Yeah, right. Oh, so now they have who, the English speaking. My God. Sorry, I really am into wild edibles. What? So do you know that the dandelion is completely edible? Absolutely. Every part of it except for the poop. <laughs> I mean, you could probably still eat that, but that's you can probably eat not... You the poop, yeah. but it's like the pig. You can eat every part of it except the oink. Mm. Right? It's like when I was in Rome, and I would go to the farmer's market, and they would have, have this... They'd have the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. They'd have this whole weed there, this whole green <laughs> thing there. And I'm like, what is this called? And they're like, oh... Wild arugula. <laughs> arugula selvatica. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you mean a dandelion? Mm -hmm. Like, no, no, it's not a dandelion. They just had to have a little making out. <laughs> post, post, post meatus. I bet you taste delicious right now. So, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a guy who is a, he leads tours. His name, and for a while I did follow him on YouTube. I may still do so. Named Sergei Butenko. That's a great name. I know, it's awesome. He's all American. He uh, lives, I think, in Washington or Oregon. I mean, that, that all tracks with so far what you've told me about this situation. Yeah. And he even occasionally does urban foraging. Uh huh. Where he'll just take you Which out in the has suburbs. a guy who, will, who does that. And you walk around and you go, you know, you can eat this? What? You can eat this? Mm. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't want to eat this one because someone's dog probably peed yeah, on it. Or worse, but, yeah. Yeah. I'd like to get into foraging. Talk to, no, just, no. No, I just want to like go on a w little walk with someone. And get into foraging. Very good. Yes. No, just once for content for my <laughs> podcast. <laughs> or for my blog. I know of a guy in Richmond that does that kind of okay, stuff. Okay, good. And so I'm sure there's someone here who does yeah. that. So. No, I'll come down. Well, right, yeah, come on down. We'll go find that guy. Yeah. I mean, along with your, I'm not going to be natural. <laughs> I'll be wearing my clothes because I'm only natural at home. <laughs> You're not the first person to ask me. It's like, is that me being a nudist? And I was yeah. like, I'm like, no, this is like we like go hang out in nature and shit. Though yeah. I guess that's what a nudist would say too. So you know, it's, yeah, it's a slappy naturalist. I'm yeah. only slappy naturalist at home. As it's cooled down, I've had to limit those opportunities. And now that there are puppies around with sniffers and claws, you know, like that's yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, because they will be like, what is this? Yeah. This smells like weed. Mm -hmm. Boink. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, the, the best one I got the other day was I was bending over to get their water bowls to fill them up one morning. Did you not bend in the knees? <laughs> well, not as much as I needed to, but so a dog walked by and then a tail whacked a ball. You know, like just, <laughs> I'm like, and you know, it's 6 30 in the morning. I'm not awake yet. I haven't even turned on the coffee yet. And I'm like, mother. <laughs> Yeah, and they can't, they can't control the trajectory of that tail. Oh, no, and they had no idea what was going on because yeah. now I'm, like, dancing around screaming, and they're like, but is this a new they're thing? They're like, dog, okay. dog, <laughs> dog. They're like, dog, 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 and you're like, ah! You, you know, <laughs> like, bleary eye, just like, what is happening? Jesus. I'll leave that in the For Friends Only podcast. <laughs> or you don't mind. I, it does not bother Nobody me, will so know who you are. Yeah, right, that's... Anyway, there are only seven people, actually four. <laughs> yeah. Who to this yeah. you, you and your alternative email, and your yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I'm like, oh, like I looked at, I checked the stats on on the whole podcast or whatever it was, and it was like, oh, you've had three point eight thousand views. It's not even impressions clicks. or right. whatever. Yeah, you know, it means nothing basically. This is. No, I mean, 3, someone 000... scrolled and, like, your thing was part of the yeah, scroll, it was, right? Yeah. That's... It's like, this is 3,800% better than last week. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's right, because last week there was nada. Are you putting this on your blog? Like, where are you posting 
I have not actually posted these on, you're right, I haven't posted them on my blog because there's a link on the blog to the audio. Okay. Yeah. And when you say audio, is you mean like the actual podcast or do you yeah. just an audio file? Okay. No, I mean, same difference, but that's... Yeah, well, I do, I, I got a membership with Epidemic Sound. Have you heard of them? No, I'm not familiar, but that's fine. So when you watch YouTube, which I'm sure you do all the time. All the time. Yeah. And somebody's got a little thingy and they've got a little music playing and they're allowed to play that music because they paid for the copyright permission. Yeah, no, I'm familiar. They probably are using Epidemic Sound. Okay. It's a huge, huge database. Uh, there are others like Gemendo, but Epidemic Sound is the most. And if you read the credits that they give, they will have included music from Epidemic Sound. Got it. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things that you don't look for, and now right. you mention it, and I'll look for it every look time. At yeah. It, yeah. So you don't have to mention the artists themselves. You can just say the music is from Epidemic Sound. Yeah, and, and if there's but, some agreement, then you're good. So, yeah. That's... But what I liked was that it's also for musicians who want to get their music heard. Okay. So if they're a musician and they're, you know, they want to be the next Eric Clapton, I don't know. We'll go with a Eric Clapton. A lot of it is not vocal. A lot okay. of it is just the Musical, instrument. Musical, yes. And they will, they, they've written a piece. Some of them are really short, 15 seconds. Some of them might be a whole orchestra, an hour or I'm whatever. I'm going to give you a ditty. And they will put it up there and offer it up for people to, some of it's free and some of it you have to pay. I was looking for a little bit the standard method. I'm using the standard method right now of a hook, a little hook, and then a little piece of music, a little intro, a little piece of music, and then on to the content. Okay. The body, and then end with a little music, a little wrap up, and then... This is what you learned today. Yeah. Uh, My friends are insane. And I really, you don't have to have music on a podcast, but I really wanted a little bit something that was a little jumpy, a little jazzy. You need a little a something little at least to start things off. Yeah, I mean, that's... And or maybe some closing, you know, that's... And I got uh, our friend, he writes music. I would say he's a musician different, of some variety, yeah. I got it. He sent me many little files. Lovely. None of it was what I was looking for. Okay. I said, I'll even pay for it. But it was just not what I was looking for. And then, I so I succumbed a few months ago and got my Epidemic Sound... You can listen to some stuff for free, but I was like, it's not very much. I don't okay. know what it costs, a hundred dollars a year or something. Like that. Okay. And I thought I would use it more than I do, but so far I'm only using this little tiny clip of music. But I really like it. It's jazzy. And when I heard it, I was like, God, oh, this is great. And I and I'm still using GarageBand for my audio editing. Okay. And then I use iMovie for my visual editing. Okay. So first I have to do the. You know, first I have to go record the thing, then I listen to it, cut it in different pieces, and then listen to it again, try to take out as many of the ums and likes and you knows. Huh? Huh? Um, so that it's not an annoying amount of them, but also leaving enough space, otherwise it seems oddly packed together. I didn't show you my, my tech closet. I'm not even going to go there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tech toys. I would like um, to play in your toy closet at some point. All right. I would like to facilitate before we get out of here. Okay, yes. It's a good idea. Am I allowed to take this thing off? Yes. Yet? Okay. All right, yes. We don't want to hear you in the, uh, in the, in the, for just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to M's Adventures in Storytelling. This time was more of a chitter-chatter, or a catch-up, or a chat-up with my friend Noel after not having seen him for quite a while. We covered a wide range of things, some of the private stuff I've cut out, but I think that you still get a little flavor of our friendship and how fun we have how much how fun how much fun we have chatting with each other thanks for listening bye for now